Am I the asshole for leaving a religious therapy camp early? I, 19, have had PTSD for years and have been recently diagnosed with schizophrenia. This diagnosis has clarified things for me and given me a direction to go with treatment, but it's caused quite a bit if a struggle with my mom and my dad. Earlier this week, my dad sat me down and asked me if I would go to this therapy camp place to get treatment for my schizophrenia. The catch? This place was extremely religious and I am very much not. I wouldn't say that I don't believe in Jesus, I do. I just wouldn't associate myself with Christianity as a whole due to a dislike of organized religion. I tried to say no. I wasn't interested in going. At the very least, I wanted time to think about it. My dad asked me what there was to think about and claimed that if I didn't go, then I didn't want help. This upset me. Of course I want help. I was in the process of getting help already, having just started with a new therapist and having been taking medication to treat my symptoms for over a year. He pressed and eventually, I gave in. After all, how bad could it be? It was bad. In the morning, there was devotion, breakfast, and chapel. Three times a day, there was group therapy, which was basically an hour and a half each a Bible study. Throughout the day, there were one-on-one -on -one appointments where you would talk about your relationship with Christ and nothing else. I hated it. It was like they were trying to shove their beliefs down my throat while claiming that they were a community, a family of sorts. I was miserable. I came to this place for help with my schizophrenia, not to be rescued from the clutches of the devil. I also received lots of judgment and dirty looks when it came out that I was trans and dating someone born as my own gender assigned at birth. Many attempts were made by other patients to save me, and they claimed that the first step to healing was admitting I was a dirty sinner. So, I started plotting my way out of there. We were allowed to keep our phones, so I made a GoFundMe. In my desperation, I worded it harshly and frantically typed out some things that I didn't quite mean. Admittedly, it painted Christians, at least the Christians at this camp, in a bad light. Luckily for me, my LARP group found the GoFundMe and, within a day, my goal was reached. I could afford a plane ticket to go home. Before I flew home, I was taken aside by the camp director, therapists, and other patients, all begging me and laying on the guilt trip to get me not to go home. They claimed that I must not love or respect my parents if I didn't want to stay here. I steeled myself and went to the airport to fly home. The problem? My parents found the GoFundMe. Today I have to meet with my dad to explain why I refused what's, in his words, life-changing help. After having so many people in my life tell me I should have stayed, I can't help but wonder if they're right. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Yeah, that place was not good for you and was not going to help you and you clearly needed to get out. Religion will not rid you of schizophrenia and I do not know why your parents don't seem to understand that. Could they also have been hoping they'd scare, Jesus the trans out of you, too? If you're living with them, I'd advise working on getting out, and if you are already out, limit contact. Not the asshole that's weird. Honestly, religion is not a good substitute for actual professional help. Don't let them guilt trip for leaving either. Focus on yourself and getting better. Not the asshole. That place is not medical help. It will not help you. Info. Was this actually a gay conversion therapy camp? Not the asshole are you safe with your parents? Am I the asshole for not celebrating my anniversary with my BF? Okay. Listen up. I know the title sounds like I am the a-hole. In August my boyfriend and I celebrated a year together. And I mentioned about celebrating it together but he had work so I said to do it on the weekend and he agreed. My best friend was able to purchase two tickets for the 80s concert in Mexico and she invited me, we have been friends for 12 years and our friendship anniversary August 23rd, and I was so happy I said yes without a second thought. My anniversary with my boyfriend is in August 22nd, so, on August 22nd I sent a long message with a poem I wrote to my boyfriend, saying happy anniversary and he responded with a heart. I packed and left to Mexico City with my bestie, at mid-concert, August 23rd, my mom calls telling me that my boyfriend is outside waiting for me to go for a romantic dinner and a surprise. I was in disbelief since he himself told me that we couldn't spend it together. I sent him a message saying that I was at a concert and that I would be home until Friday evening. And what was happening? He called me he went into a full rant telling me he planned a surprise, and that I shouldn't have gone to a concert even if we hadn't plans cause it was our day and I should respect it. I told him that he had to stop yelling and that he needed to calm down so we could talk. He got angrier so I told him we would talk later or when I got back home and he hang up on me. 
I enjoyed the rest of the concert and when I went home I tried to call him, and was sent directly to voicemail, went to his house and he didn't even open up. He barely had talked to me since then and my bestie and mom say that I don't need to apologize cause I did nothing wrong. So am I the asshole? Edit. He went to his shift at August 21st at night, and my bestie told me about the tickets at 7pm August 21st. I sent him a message at 7.30. The same night I learned about the tickets, and he usually won't turn on his phone until he wakes up. So, I thought he would turn on his phone on August 22nd or the first hours of August 23rd read my message and that's it. But he didn't read it the night of the anniversary, he just turned in his phone, popped to his car and went to my house. Second edit. Wow. Most people are hanging on the point of my friendship anniversary. I'm sorry if it seems off but I'm Mexican, have double nationality, and it's a bit common to have friendship anniversaries. Cuz friendship is something we value the most. She's been with me even during my darkest times. We've been through some rough patches and survived, ab C, family member death, etc., and her husband respects that date cause is the day we became best friends. Seems weird? I'm sorry but it's something we've been doing for a decade. And I'm not going to change that. Not the asshole. He told you he had to work. You're not a mind reader, so you couldn't have known he was planning a surprise. And this. I shouldn't have gone to a concert even if we hadn't plans cause it was our day and I should respect it. Is ridiculous. Suppose he really did have to work. He expects you to stay at home and do nothing while he works? Is he that possessive of you? He hang up on me. He barely had talked to me since then. So now he's giving you the silent treatment. Me. I'd be making sure this first anniversary was our last anniversary. Not the asshole, you wanted to do something, he said he wasn't free so you made other plans. If you're planning a surprise you can simply say keep that day free and just not disclose info about it. Not the asshole. You don't owe him an apology. If he was planning a surprise for you then he could have said something like, as of right now I'm busy that day but please keep your day open in case something changes and I am able to do something with you. It's done and pretty much over now, so all y'all can do is learn and grow from the situation. See this is the problem with surprises. You get in trouble for making other plans because you didn't know what your significant other planned. Nah. He had prepared a surprise but you're not a mind reader. You had the right to accept your friend's invitation if you were free that day. On the other hand, I wonder why you don't communicate about such things. Don't you tell your boyfriend when you're going on a trip? I'm a bit surprised because these are often information that people share naturally as a couple but idk.